Hello, material science students. Um, today I'm going to do a demonstration for you. I'm kind of in this darkened room. Uh, this is going to be what's called the iron wire demonstration, and this is going to demonstrate some different properties. We've been talking about solid state phase changes, um, things like that. This is also going to be the introduction into metals, the first demo for the metals unit. And so I'm going to go ahead and walk you through this uh, demonstration. So if we take a look here, um, I have a, a setup. Can I go in around here? And so this this setup, this is gonna gonna show you a bunch of different concepts with metals and stuff like that. So um, what we have here is there there are two posts coming up on either side that I have kind of clamped to the desk. And on this post right here, there's one on each side. In fact, this one you probably see a little bit better. Uh, for those of you that are in power line, you might know what these are, but these are, are insulators. These are ceramic insulators. So I have a ceramic insulator, and then this right here is a piece of iron wire that is going between the insulators. And so this is insulated away from the metal and stuff like that. Some other points of interest that are on here, there is a piece of styrofoam attached to the center right here. It's got a little piece of blue tape on it so that you can see it. This is going to be important a little bit later. And then here we have two magnets attached to the wire. And so they're just stuck on there because it's iron wire. Iron, wi iron is ferrous. Okay, so or anything that contains iron is, is called ferrous. And things that are ferrous are magnetic. So magnets will, will attach themselves to things that contain iron most of the time. There are exceptions out there. And below that, what paper towel in it. The other thing that I have, it's kind of, um, let's see if we can zoom in on it a little bit here. So this right here, if you're in electronics, you may know what this is. You may have seen one before. You may have seen one in a science class before. Okay, it's got an knob here on the top of it. This is called a, a variac. Okay, so a variable AC controller, variable alternating current controller. This is like a dimmer switch that is really beefed up. Okay, so this right here, you have zero, no currents coming through, and then you can turn it up and more and more electricity will pass through. So this is going to be an important part of this uh, this experiment or this demonstration right here. Okay, so what I also have on this Variac, there's a little plug on the side, and I've taken an old, um, actually it was a new extension cord, and I took that extension cord and I split it, cut the ends off, and attached some little alligator clips here. And so what that allows me to do is I can take these alligator clips and I can attach them to this wire. That's a good spot there. Make sure I got a good connection. And then over here. And so now I have a circuit. When I turn on when I plug in and turn on this variac, electricity will pass through this wire. And I control how much electricity comes through, again, by using the variac. Okay, so variac is off, everything is off. And so this is going to show a couple things. When we pass electricity through, we're going to create some heat. And that's really what we're, what we're looking for today. So the first thing, thermal expansion. Whenever I pass this electricity through, it's going to start heating up that wire. And when that wire heats up, it's going to start expanding. Okay, we talked about thermal. Can we talk about thermal expansion? No, we'll talk about it some more. But that's that's the first one. Yeah, it's the first. You might have heard of it before, but this is the first time in this class. And so that's going to cause that wire to expand. And when that wire expands, it's going to get not only bigger around, but it's also going to get longer. And so you should see this wire start to dip down. If I get it really hot, if I get that wire really hot, you will see something called incandescence. And incandescence is when something gets hot enough that it starts to put off its own light. Think of an incandescent light bulb. It would really just heat up that filament so hot that it glowed. And or if you've seen metal that's been so hot that it's glowing red, that's what we call incandescence. Okay, so uh, first thing, and, and then uh, there's some other stuff that we're going to talk about as well. But let me first demonstrate this... Um, thermal expansion. Okay, So I plug this in, I've turned the switch on, and so now I'm going to give it some current, and watch, that's why the, 
the styrofoam is here. Watch for that piece of styrofoam to, to kind of dip down. Watch for the wire to dip down. Okay, so we're going to run some current through. You see it going down. I'm going to turn it off. And as I turn it off, it's going to cool and then slowly that piece of styrofoam will go back up as that wire cools it's going to contract and it'll get shorter okay so thermal expansion and I'm going to unplug this so that I don't shock myself I'm working on my own which is a bad idea and the fire extinguisher is all the way over there so this could make for an interesting video I don't know. Uh, so anyway we had thermal expansion going on I didn't get it hot enough for incandescence that comes next now there was something else there's a there's a point called the Curie temperature and the Curie temperature is a point at which you can get something that's ferrous, magnetic, hot enough that it will no longer become magnetic anymore. And so these um, magnets that are on here, I got one here and I have one here. Whenever I turn this on, so I'm going to turn it on, I'm going to give it a lot more current this time. When I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to really crank it up. And whenever I do that, okay, look for thermal expansion. It's going to dip down. Look for incandescence. It should start to get red hot. And then look for the Curie temperature. When it hits that certain temperature, the magnets, it'll no longer be magnetic, and the magnets should fall off. And if I've lined it up correctly, they should fall directly into my little wet paper towels there and not roll around catching things on fire. Okay, so those are the big things. There's another thing to watch out for, and that's whenever I turn this off. When I turn this off, you're going to see that the first time that we did this, we had thermal expansion. It heated up. It went down. I turned it off and it went back up. This next time when I do it, this should be a little bit different. We should see something different. It's definitely going to go down, but watch it on the back up. Okay, so watch for, for all those things. I'm going to go ahead and ramp this up again. Okay, thermal expansion. Look at, look at that incandescence right there. Nice and red hot. Curie temperature, that one dropped. Watch for this one. Oh! <laughs> okay, gonna go ahead and take a time out. Got a little bit too overzealous on that one. We'll set this up and try it again. All right, and I'm back. Save that for the bloopers reel. Okay, so let's try this again. I'm not going to go for the full Curie temp, so hopefully when these magnets get warm enough, um, we can do that. Not really sure why that happened, but you got a little something interesting to, to watch. So again, um, incandescence you saw, okay? Curie temperature you saw with the, with the magnets falling off of there. Um, actually, you know what? I'm going to just go ahead and take the, take the magnet off. So that way I'm not tempted to try and overheat it again. Sometimes it, it's, and one thing to, to kind of go back with, actually I'll, I'll, I'll leave this one on. Yeah, I'll leave them both on. There's a thing, there's a, a process called a heat sink. And if you're familiar with that with computers or anything like that, a heat sink is something that draws the heat away. And what you can see is that whenever this heats up, you'll see that the wire gets red, but it's not red right there because heat is going into the magnet to heat it up and it's kind of drawing. And remember, he, if, I don't know if you remember this, but heat always goes from areas of high heat to low heat. And so heat will go into that magnet and then once that magnet gets hot enough, then it will, um, then it will fall. Let's see if I put it on there sideways. This might be, might be able to get a better, more of a heat sink. You might be able to see it a little bit better if it's this way. I'll try something different. I'll experiment a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, and run this again. You can watch the magnets if you want to. Watch for the heat sink. That might be a little bit interesting. But if the magnets don't fall, I'm just going to go ahead and get it incandescent, get it so that it sags, and I'm going to shut it off. And, and again, you're watching for that back up. Whenever, it's, whenever it goes back up, I want you to watch for that. Okay, here we go. Okay, we got our incandescence. You see the heat sink. Okay, now I'm shutting it off. Watch. It goes up. See how it dipped just a little bit? 
and now it's slowly continuing its way back up. That's the important part, okay? That dip right there. That dip is what we call a solid state phase change. That, that dip has a lot of stuff going on inside of it. So I'm gonna unplug my variac, move it off to the side here. And so what I need to explain a little bit is crystal structure. Let me move this out of the way so it's not. So crystal structure, what's going on here? Inside of this wire right now at normal temperatures, the wire, the iron wire has a certain crystalline structure and that crystalline structure is body center cubic. Okay, remember body center cubic. We got the eight and then the one in the center. And this is, this is how all of the crystalline structure, all the way through everything is body center cubic. When I apply heat and I heat it up, when it reaches a certain temperature, the iron will switch from body center cubic to face center cubic. And so this is face center cubic. So the atoms will rearrange themselves while it is still a solid. So it hasn't turned into a liquid. While still solid, those atoms will rearrange themselves and go into um, face center cubic. Makes the wire more easy to manipulate. Okay, as, as metals get hotter, they get a little bit easier to bend and, and malleable and stuff like that and this is part of the reason. Now look at the difference in atoms here. When it is in body center cubic each crystal has one two three four five six seven eight nine atoms. When it is in face center cubic we have one two three four five six seven we have fourteen atoms in each crystal. So this has a lot more atoms conservation of mass, we can't have atoms coming from somewhere else. The wire has to use all the atoms that it has in itself. And so because of that, because it's going from each crystal having this many to this many, those atoms get rearranged, there's not as many there, the wire will get shorter. Okay? It just has to happen. Because each crystal is not using more atoms, there's not as many atoms to go around, it gets shorter. And so maybe if you go back and look at it, I'll see if I can do something in editing, but this wire, you might have seen it on the dip down. It's hard to see on, on the dip on the whenever it's heating up. When it's heating up, you might have seen it kind of like go down. And there was a dip on the way down, but it was it was very slight. So most people miss it. It's much better whenever we turn it off. And so whenever it's red hot, all the way through it was all face center cubic. I turn off the heat. It starts to cool down, and when the wire hits a certain temperature, it will switch from this to this. It will switch from face center cubic to body center cubic. So it will go from atoms having, it will go from crystals having lots of atoms to crystals having few, and that allows it to spread back out because there's, those atoms can be spread out over more crystals. And so what's happening is it's, it's, all, it's all like this. It's cooling down, and then it will switch. All of a sudden it has more crystals, and it will get that dip, and then it will continue to cool down in body center cubic until it, it gets to where it is. And so that is the main point, or the, the main idea right here. This is a solid state phase change that you can see actually happening with your eyes. Um, so, so there is that one right there. Uh, something else I want to show you, a little bit of, of bonus footage, if you will. And I'll see if I can come around here. Let me turn on the light. I'm going to pause this and turn on the light real quick. So this is the um, the wire that broke before, and so I want to show you you something. So for my first endeavor, so this is the wire that that broke, and let me get a piece of this is the, the wire right here that is fresh from the package. This is annealed iron wire. And so if I take the stuff directly from the package and we take a look at it and I and I bend it, it's it's annealed wire, so it bends pretty easily, but there's not a whole lot really going on with it. It's just kind of you know, a no, normal piece of annealed wire. I'm getting a little bit of black on my hands from some of the oil that was on there, 
to keep it from rusting. That's about it. So now this one here, after it's been heated, watch whenever I bend it. Well, I kind of went all at once. Okay, but do you see all the flex of everything that is coming off of it? Okay, this is corrosion or oxidation. And so all of that is oxidation that happens around the outside of the wire. So we have all this, this big layer of oxidation around the outside of it. Um, and that's something that we'll get into a lot more whenever we talk about corrosion and things like that. But this is just a, li a little bonus thing talking about corrosion. All right, I forgot to show you something. I'm going to show you that right now. Let me go ahead and turn the lights back off. So I'm going to try and maybe get it to dip again. We will see. And take my magnets off. But this this wire is the same one. I haven't changed it. This is the one that, that's already gone through one heating cooling cycle. And whenever it, it did that, it got that layer of corrosion around the outside of it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape off. I'm going to find a spot like right here. I'm going to use some sandpaper and take off that oxidation layer. And then I'm also going to do that over here. So pay attention to those two areas that I use the, uh, maybe I'll do one here in the center too. Pay attention to those areas that I, that I use the uh, sandpaper on. So that oxidation layer, it actually acts as a insulator. And so I want you to look, I'm going to take this back up to incandescence. Let me get my stuff out of the way in case it breaks again. And you get back up to incandescent level. And I want you to look at where I did that, that sandpaper. Look at the incandescence there compared to everywhere else. All right, you ready? Here we go. Three, two, one. See how those areas are getting brighter faster? Okay. All right, I'm going to go ahead and shut it off, see if we can see that dip again. Goes up. I don't think I got it hot enough. Now what happens is each time that I do this, it's going to get more oxidation around it, which is going to cause the wire to get thinner. And as the wire gets thinner, more resistance, more likely to break. Can you tell? Okay, so let me see if I can do this again. There was a little bit of a, of a bump there on the way down, if you happen to see it. Let me get this nice and red hot. Yeah, that was it. Now I'm going to go off. Much better. Got that, that dip or that bump there. Okay, so that is showing the iron wire demonstration. I believe that is everything that I wanted to curie temperatures, incandescence, the insulating of the, um, the ceramic coating or the, the uh, oxidation layer. We did the solid state phase change. Yeah, I believe that's everything. All right, um, I will talk to you folks later.